and all of the superintendents I spoke to today across our region, they all said the same thing. Calling off school is not an easy decision at all, but ultimately the safety of their students is what makes the call. Some of the cracks are so large you can see through the wall and into the hallway. And project managers say if those cracks are left unattended, they could cause this building to fall. Mr. Kerr, do you have anything to say to the taxpayers? This farmer is not concerned with what's in the ground. In fact, he's more interested in what's in the sky. The line stretched all the way out here to the parking lot, about 30 people deep all day long, and all of them said that this help couldn't have come at a better time. Mr. Pruitt, you lost your son and now you're charged with his murder. Do you have anything to say? They don't know where that leak was or what sparked the explosion. And what an explosion it was. Take a look here. Not only are there pieces of the couple's home in their driveway, that concussion damaged homes a thousand feet away. That's tonight's top story, and we are joined now by Local 6's Julie Collins. Julie, why would the same prosecutor who signed that letter now be prosecuting them for the same crime? That's what we wanted to know, and everybody's asking. So we went to find out, and it turns out that there were two more letters sent warning the Amish that the law was changing and that that first letter was no longer valid. This letter, signed by Graves County Attorney John Cunningham, says in no uncertain terms, buggies using this reflective tape are, quote, deemed to have complied with the state's slow-moving vehicle law. Yet, the same county attorney who signed this letter is now prosecuting these men for not following the law. Uh, we're holding our end of the agreement, Could but they are not. We dug a little deeper to find out if that's true and learned it's not quite that simple. Although Cunningham refused to talk to us, the Kentucky State Police showed us these two follow-up letters from the same county attorney warning them about revisions to the statutes. They may not understand certain laws, and it's our, it's our job to try and explain them. So KSP says they held two meetings with the Amish community explaining they would start to cite them if they failed to comply. We paid a visit to the Amish community and turns out they remember receiving all three letters and they attended the meetings. This Amish man wouldn't let us record his voice but said, quote, we appreciate the meetings, but our religion is more important to us than our lives and we don't intend to change it. So it looks like we're all back to square one, a struggle between religion and law, and looks like neither side is backing down anytime soon. But Scott, something is going to have to give, and it's going to have to give soon, because when I spoke to Judge Crooks yesterday, she said that she has got at least 20 more of these traffic cases to deal with before the end of the year, and law enforcement continues to writing these citations. Be a lot of jail sticks, and now Local 6 Julie Collins joins us. Julie. How is this going to affect our region? Well, the local LIHEAP program director says it will be tragic. Last year, LIHEAP prevented some 15,000 families from losing their power. He says it was so busy that so many people came for help that they had to lock people out because the building just couldn't hold everybody. This year, he's bracing for more of the same, but worried because they'll be working with half the money. $408.78, $753.64, and $135. These bills are tough enough to look at and even sometimes harder to pay. Too much. $100, 150 a lot of money. Veronica Castillo lives here with her husband and four children. The winters get tough, and so she does what she can do to lower the bills. This plastic help for the bill. Every October she rolls out the tape and gets to work. No put plastic. It's cold. It's and, cold. And All house is cold. She is like many families in our region who will get creative to save money on their heating bills. They worry about a roof over their their family's head, the lights on, utilities are and heat, and food. Tony Dowdy says this year his group is worrying too. We don't have extra money to uh, to give. In fact, he has half the money he had last year and expects more people to ask for more help. I think it's going to be astronomical. We're going to see right. families freezing to I mean, I hope not, but there could be families freeze to death. Applications for help on your bills can be filed next month through your local LIHEAP agency. A link to all of the local offices is on our web channel. That can be found on the I Saw It On 6 link. But Scott and Jennifer, now is the time to prepare. I mean, you've got to be like Jennifer. 
put the plastic up over yeah. those windows, caulk the windows, put sealants on those doors, make mm -hmm. sure that the air doesn't get through, and even if you can, mm -hmm. uh, install a programmable thermostat because that mm -hmm. will definitely help. Yeah. Anything when you see this old black and white newsreel film from World War II, you probably imagine the pilots in control of these planes are white. But in reality, 996 of them look like Harold Austin. I felt that I could do anything that anyone else could. That's why in October of 1942, he dropped out of tech school and enlisted. I felt proud to be able to fight, to stand up for my country. He ended up in Tuskegee, Alabama as part of America's first all-black aerial combat unit. It was their job to protect bombers from German fighters. It was dangerous. But it was something that you just, you know, you go to go to a job, do it. Yeah. Give it your best. And that's what we did. We gave it our very best. What is most impressive was their record. In 1,500 missions, they were perfect. We, we never lost one. No other escort unit could claim that success rate. Mission accomplished. I'm rather proud of it. That's still true 67 years later. But now, the 92-year-old can share those proud moments on the silver screen. Finally, they look back and say, hey, this, this group here played a, a vital role you know, in, our, in, 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 in our armed services, in our successful uh, 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 attempt to get freedom. Freedom for all, because courage has no color. That's true. In Paducah, Julie Collins, WPSD Local 6. Flood 2011 coverage now. We turn to Local 60's Julie Collins, who joins us live on Oaks Road in McCracken County. Julie, what happened here? Well, Scott, he just didn't have the money for a permit and a lot of other things. So all that's left are these posts here. Now this is what's left of what was supposed to be the foundation for what this homeowner is calling his dream home. In the beginning, yeah, yeah. I just didn't work out. So one by one, these boards come apart. One screw at a time. It's all got to go. Depressing that watching it being torn down every day, but it's something that had to be done. This was Marty Burkeen's mobile home during flood 2011. The water damaged his home, but not enough to qualify for FEMA help. So his family scraped together what little money they had and bought this lumber to build him something new. Except... It was a nice thought, the family trying to do it. But um, just couldn't couldn't do it. And that's because this new house violates several county building codes. It's not high enough off the ground. It's built on four by four posts. And most importantly, he doesn't have a building permit. We didn't have the income or the knowledge. And it's, it was just, uh, we was hoping that nobody would pay too much mind. It's very unfortunate. David Flowers runs the county's building and inspection department. He says he hates having to stop construction, but... There's rules and regulations that are state law that I cannot break. We've got to follow the rules. It's just like him getting a brand new start and it's all being taken away from him. So Marty's friends are hard at work, sweating to the sound of power tools. It needs to be done. But Marty says he'll be all right. It's just the way things go. I mean, it's just uh, one of life's <laughs> Green's gone, I guess you can say it. Well, to give you an idea of just how far they had gotten with the construction, all of the flooring was done, the walls were put up, and Marty was just weeks away from moving into this home. And Scott, he tells me that the, it took the family almost three weeks to build what they had built and only four days to take it all down.